I have been obsessed with Kimmy Schmidt for eight days. That is it. I started watching this eight days ago and I basically didn't stop. And I've just finished watching the final episode. Completely confused that there are only four seasons plus the one-off special film, which I haven't seen. I will discuss that separately. But I don't know why there are only four seasons. I find that ludicrous. I was initially going to discuss each of the four seasons in turn, but having just watched the finale, I kind of want to just share my thoughts in a nutshell rather than going into detail about each of the four seasons. But I will discuss the main characters and what I think of them. So, you know, because of that, I will be touching on things that happened in, obviously, seasons one to three. But here I'm kind of just focusing on the characters, the concept as a whole, and the actual finale and how it was wrapped up. As I said, I haven't seen the final, the the film, so I'm not sure where that interactive special goes. So uh, if I say anything here that doesn't make any sense in relation to that, then that is why. So I'm assuming since this is going to contain spoilers that you've seen it all, but just to, just to summarise, Kimmy Schmidt was captured and held in a bunker in Dernsville, Indiana for 15 years. She's now 29, which is my age. I find that very weird um, that this is where she is in life. Um, also, it's very weird that she's 29. It's very rare that a protagonist is going to be 29. And she, at the very start, is released. She's rescued. She decides to, I guess, grab life by its horns and move to New York. And she ends up living with Titus. I love Titus. I'll talk about Kimmy Schmidt as a character in more detail and my thoughts on her in a moment. Titus Andromedon is a brilliant character. He's played by Titus Burgess and I, I love, love him. He's sassy. He is talented. And I think he represents 99% of artists in the world. Struggling, determined, willing to do almost anything. And truly dedicated to his art. I love him. Brilliant casting. Perfect character. Lillian, Lillian Kaustufer, played by Carol Kane, absolutely phenomenal. It took me a couple of episodes, I think, to kind of get on board with Lillian. But then once you heard the words, run Lillian, for like the fifth time, it, you know, she, she held a special place in my heart after that point. Um... And I, I think she's just fabulous. And her development as a character as well throughout the seasons is something that I really enjoyed. Her role in the finale, which I'll discuss in more detail in a moment, um, I, I think it is pretty special. Jean Krakowski, I love. And she is amazing as Jacqueline Voorhees. Like Lillian, it took me a little while to get used to her. But once her character started to go through a more interesting journey and she started to have a more important role in the show, I loved what she brought to it. I love Jane Krakowski. I love what she does in 30 Rock with Tina Fey. A lot of um, Jacqueline here is very much like Jenna Maroney. There is quite a bit of similarity here. But I don't see that as a problem. I think she's brilliant. Kimmy Schmidt. I worried that a girl as overly optimistic as Kimmy would get quite annoying quite quickly. But actually, that's not the case. Her optimism her optimism bounces off of characters like Lillian and Titus. And because it bounces off of them in a way that you know, they're overly negative a lot of the time. It balances it out and it's a lot of fun and it allows for a lot of humour. And that's something that I very much enjoyed. I think they got the tone of this spot on. I love Kimmy's fashion sense. She always brings a sparkle of colour. And then when that's obviously against the kind of shabby house that they're living in, this tugboat, it's it's a strong contrast. And there are a lot of contrasts in this. And I think that that's one of the reasons why it works as well. Because the tone and the mood is always just spot on. Kimmy's own journey throughout the four, four seasons is really interesting. Um, she, I think she flips at one point. She goes, I think maybe in the first two and a half seasons, she's 
very similar. It takes her a little while to actually begin to develop as a person. And then suddenly she starts changing. I think mainly when she decided to go to university after that point, everything began to change quite quickly, which I guess is the case when you go off to, off to university. And it was interesting to see kind of what happened when she started to live a more adult life. Um, she still remained quite naive, of course, but she did a lot of growing. Mostly thanks to, well, I say mostly thanks to, it had very little to do with her therapist, the fabulous Tina Fey. I didn't know she was actually in this when I first started watching this. So that was an absolute you know, delight to find out that she was actually going to be in it relatively quickly. So obviously I adore Tina Fey. Also exceptionally delighted to see Lisa Kudrow in this. Again, didn't know she was going to be in it. As a character, I don't like her. I don't like Kimmy's mother, but I like the fact that they've given her a, an additional backstory over time. And, and, you know, she's got problems caused by her relationship with her mother, problems caused obviously by the bunker. And that's something that, you know, it just gave it an extra dimension. John Hamm as Reverend Richard Wayne, Gary Wayne. You know, I wanted to punch him so many times. I think he's a very well-written character. Um, there was that episode in season four, I think, where it was kind of a the documentary episode. And I just, I thought, I felt like that episode was in there to tie up some loose ends with his character. But I did not like that episode. I, I just, I couldn't get on board with it. And there were actually a few, a few things about season four that I didn't like. That was one of them. There were several other episodes that I felt like they were trying to be really creative with. And it just didn't work. There was a bit too experiment, too much experimentation in season four, but kind of the first couple of episodes and then the last half were really brilliant. But there were a few episodes in the first half of the last season that just, I don't know, it, it just didn't work for me. But that doesn't detract from how absolutely brilliant this is. And as I said, I was going to talk a bit about the finale, but I also just want to say, first of all, I love the theme song. I love the soundtrack. I'm so addicted to it, I can't get it out of my head. And that's much to the misfortune of everybody around me. Kimmy getting a job was a really great thing for season four because it kind of said, look, here she is. She's been through university, kind of. Here she is in the real adult world, but she still retains who she is. She's still quite naive and fun-loving and not really that good at picking up on social signals. And bringing in Jacqueline into that, as Jacqueline White, of course, into her world and keeping them as friends is brilliant. Because I did worry after kind of she stopped working for her how, how they would continue to keep that character in because I was desperate that we didn't lose Jacqueline. Um, and I think they did, they did a great thing. They allowed the character to stay in in a way that worked very well. And it meant that we got her to, got her to stick around. I have no complaints about the treatment of that character whatsoever or her role in the final season. I think she retained the qualities of who she is, but she had enough chance and enough time to grow and to become a completely different person to who she was in season one. And I absolutely, truly adored that. Um, Xanthippe, I love. Uh, I didn't originally, but in the fourth season, I just whenever she was in it, I just thought, yeah, you're, you're, you're great, you're brilliant. Um, she was good fun, and I imagine she would have been a lot of fun to play. I really enjoyed her. It is a shame that Tina Fey wasn't in the final season. I don't know why that was. Uh, I think that was missing from the final episode. And Dong was also missing from the final episode, which is not a sentence I ever thought I'd say. I, I feel like, yes, his character kind of had a solid ending because we know what happened. But I feel like I want to know his story and what happened thereafter. And, you know, about his marriage as well. I want to know what happened. Um, because I feel like there are questions there that aren't answered. And I want to know how Kimmy still feels about him. Because he meant a lot to her. And I really liked him. Season four, the actual ending. 
when everything wraps up with Titus performing in The Lion King, his dream. Amazing. I did think maybe it was a bit over the top that he became the lead, or rather he was no longer an understudy. I feel like that was giving him too much at once. But allowing him to be the understudy while also being in the chorus would have been a better idea because it means that he would have still got to live his dream, but it was a bit more realistic. Lillian embodying the spirit of New York. I loved it. Uh, I, I thought that was brilliant. And she finally kind of realised who she is because I feel like she spent her entire life not really knowing who she was or not feeling like she had a purpose. But now she does. She embodies the spirit of New York. She is representative of New York. And that's absolutely fantastic. Honestly, season four was not a perfect season. It was the weakest of all four of them. But in terms of a final episode and everything wrapping up, apart from a few missing characters, a few stories not really tying up the loose ends, um, I feel like it should have... Well, on the one hand, I feel like it should have mentioned the other mole women, Cindy Gretchen and Donna Maria. But at the same time, Kimmy's moving on with her life. She's learning to deal with her past, but moving forward. So I can also see why it didn't really very heavily feature them. I kind of... It could have gone both ways. Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt took me a long time to get around to seeing it. And now that I've seen it, I not only understand the appeal, but completely encourage everybody to watch it. Um, I also realised that I have at no point in this mentioned Ellie Kemper's name, which is absolutely appalling of me. Ellie Kemper, of course, plays Kimmy Schmidt and nobody else could have done that. Uh, I mean, I'm sure there are other actors who could have taken on that role, but to me, she is the face of this show and... She's just fabulous. Uh, she really brings this character to life. As I said, it's a very well written, well, well written character. And she's just so vibrant and full of personality. And I wish I knew Kimmy Schmidt, Kimmy Schmidt in person. I think she'd make the world a better place. The show is great. The character is great. Tina Fey is great. Just have to throw that in there. Unbreakable. Kimmy Schmidt is brilliant.